I'm Darren Ruggan and on today's episode we're going to discuss estimations and deadlines. Estimations and deadlines. That's the topic for today. <sighs> if you saw my last video, which was a live coding exercise where I spent 40 something minutes test driving capacitor for the first time, I actually thought that would take me about 15 minutes. And even at the end of the video, I thought it was about 15 minutes because I wasn't actively tracking my time and I wasn't paying attention to my time. It could have taken me 15 minutes, but I made a lot of silly mistakes. I nearly didn't release that video because of how long it took. And I thought I could shoot it again and do it in 15 minutes. But I thought that was unfair. Uh, and why is it unfair? It's unfair because that's the reality of it. It's the reality of picking up a brand new technology uh, and trying it out. I hadn't even installed it before I started recording for the video. I was in two minds. Do I show the whole thing or do I edit it down and take out all the mistakes so you just see the clean flow? And I decided to leave it in with all of the uh, mistakes and how I figured them out and resolved them because that's what you will probably have when you, when you try these technologies. It's rare that it works straight out of the box first time and you do have to spend a bit of extra time uh, that you don't normally consider. And what, how does that bring into estimation? Well, bring it back. I estimated 15 minutes. I thought the video would be less than half an hour uh, and it took significantly longer. It's disappointing. It is disappointing because estimating is an important thing. It's a skill needed to understand the, the cost or the estimation of time, be that time or money. Uh, normally, you know, they're interchanged because you're paying for t people's time with money, et cetera, et cetera. But the point that I'm making is when you're doing the estimation, a lot of times you're doing the happy path estimation. You're thinking if everything goes right, what's the next step and then the next step and the next step again? And that is how we do our estimates. Because if you come in quicker, than you said you're going to be. Most people are overjoyed. They're happy, you know, that you worked hard or diligently, but you need to make sure that you have enough time in there that you're not putting yourself under undue pressure to get something out just because you've only considered the happy path. Is estimation important? Yes. Only by measuring it do you get better at it. So if you start looking at uh, how to do something and break those into a set of tasks, and then try to estimate those tasks. In software, we generally try to estimate them into small, medium, and large, or extra large. Uh, so then it's easier to logically uh, create some sort of sorting uh, before we break down to more granular estimations. So why did I mention deadlines and estimations? Well, they sort of work hand in hand. You need to do an estimation to understand how long you have to build or complete the task. So you can make a commitment to someone else that you will have the outcome of that task for them by a given time. Now, that deadline is important and that deadline is, you know, a deliverable that you say you're going to have something done by a certain time. And it can create a urgency that wouldn't otherwise be there. An urgency is very important when you're trying to understand what are the tasks I should be working on and what's the most important thing to do today. And when urgency is removed, sometimes we have what's called gold plating where we can just keep working on stuff and keep working on stuff. So there is a balancing between like estimation and taking as long as it takes and, and deadlines. Now, we try to sometimes balance those by a concept called time boxing. And in time boxing, we set a set amount of time uh, to complete a task. And what that means is you're going to do whatever you can do within that time period to try to get to that outcome. That may not be the best result. It may not be the best way of doing it. It may take longer or cost more to do. Time boxing is very useful, especially if it's a new thing, if you're doing an investigation, etc. Because estimating tasks that are similar to tasks you've done before can be relatively straightforward. But it becomes more difficult when you're trying to estimate tasks that you have not done before because you have no frame of reference to determine how long things will take. 
And that's where we come into the concept of time boxing, where you say, I'm going to dedicate this amount of time to do something. If you think about value, a car is valuable, but you get the same amount of value out of nearly all cars. They are a transportation method from A to B. And a $20,000 car and a $70,000 car still give you that primary value roughly the same. The, the incremental increase in price doesn't necessarily change how the, the percentage of value if you consider the value being a mode of transport. Bells and whistles and extras and heated seats, they're all nice, nice to haves. But the primary value of a tr mode of transportation can be delivered just as easily with a $20,000 car as a $70,000 car. Now, why did I talk about that? Well, the time boxing value focus and that primary value focus where when we do larger estimations can be difficult. Now, there's always a trade-off between estimating, uh, overestimating, underestimating and time boxing. Now, I could have time boxed the video, which I did uh, in the test drive to capacitor, but in doing that, I would not have got to the completion point, which I set out at the start as the success being having a mobile phone app running on a simulator using some of the device sensors. In hindsight, I was overly optimistic in the time frames. When we get to estimation, there's lots of different options. We have like give us up the ballpark, which is the you know rough guess. And these, these estimations are at different levels of confidence. And as the confidence decreases, um, the estimate range should be bigger. When you give somebody a definitive time frame, uh, it's very difficult to step that back. I much prefer, and I would recommend you do as well, to say the best case is X, the worst case is Y, but I'm thinking it's probably somewhere around Z. And that ranging can really explain the unknowns that we are trying to articulate in the estimation process. And through that, we can take the Z value and, and then have a at what we think it will take, and we can have a worst case and a best case scenario. And that worst case scenario of connecting those estimations together, that is what I would probably use for my externalized deadlines. And why? Because that gives me the most uh, fat to, to deal with unexpected uh, stuff. Without estimation, we can't accurately plan the deployment of our time on feature one, feature two, business one, business two, etc. It is a skill that I hope to improve, but it is something which is always going to be difficult. It's almost as bad as the next hardest thing. What do you call something? But we'll leave that for another video. These videos are a little technical at the start, but I probably go into more and more uh, discussions around entrepreneurship and development rather than how-tos. But I hope to bring a balance to all of those. To recap, estimation is hard. The more similar a task, the easier it is. <laughs> Make sure to take a buffer, especially if you haven't dealt with people before. And if it's a new technology, make sure you add extra on. Apart from that, estimations are guesses, folks. If we knew exactly what it was doing, it would be a factory. It'd be a, and we'd know and it would be automated. But as a solo side hustle bootstrapper, yeah, it's just gonna be, and I'll get to it when I get to it. Because after all, it's important to look after yourself. And if it's a side hustle, it should work for you and fit in around you. So make sure to look after yourselves. Bye from me. I hope to show you what it's really like as a solo bootstrapper who's got another full-time job. Can I launch products on the internet that make money? You'll have to follow me to find out. Then hit the subscribe button and join me on my journey.